So basically, this primary at this point in time looks like it's coming down to Bernie Sanders versus Joe Biden. And we have a very difficult task of trying to flip some Joe Biden supporters. Now, primarily, I think that the best argument to convince them to come over to Bernie Sanders' side, assuming that policy isn't their number one priority, is electability. Because a lot of voters are indicating that they're voting for Joe Biden because they think he's the best bet to beat Donald Trump. So we have to make sure that we convince them that Bernie is the most electable. But another thing that we have to focus on is the fact of the reality that Joe Biden supporters disproportionately are older and Bernie supporters are mostly younger. So there's that generational gap. But we have to tell everyone who supports Joe Biden, any older voter that we know personally, that this is an individual who isn't just going to lose to Donald Trump because he's less electable, but he poses a direct threat to their livelihood. Yes, their livelihood if they depend on Social Security. Because for the last 40 years, as early as 1984 and as recently as 2018, Joe Biden has been advocating for a cut in Social Security. And this was pointed out by a phenomenal article in The Intercept by Ryan Grimm. Now, I'm not going to read the article, but I'm going to show you video clips straight from the horse's mouth where Joe Biden says, I'm down to cut Social Security. Because if you show this to older people and they know how important Social Security is, then this could potentially persuade them. Because I have parents who depend on Social Security. And if that were cut, it would be devastating. And I know that a lot of people who are living off of that know how devastating that will be. So if Social Security is something that's important to them, and it should be important to everyone, but people benefiting from it now especially know, then this is how we can possibly persuade people that Joe Biden is not the candidate for them. Take a look. When I introduced the budget freeze years ago, the liberals of my party said, it's an awful thing you're doing, Joe. You are all the programs we care about. You're freezing them. Money for the blind, the disabled, education, and so on. And my argument then is the one I make now, which is the strongest, most compelling reason to be for this, but this amendment or an amendment. And that is that if we don't do that, all the things I care most about are going to be gone. I mean, whatever happened to that old conservative discipline about paying for what you spend? I'm up for re-election this year, and I'm going to remind everybody what I did at home, which is going to cost me politically. I, when I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. I meant Medicare and Medicaid. I meant veterans' benefits. I meant every single solitary thing in the government. And I not only tried it once, I tried it twice, I tried it a third time, and I tried it a fourth time. Somebody has to tell me in here how we're going to do this hard work without dealing with any of those. I introduced the balanced budget amendment in 1984. It got nowhere. I'm one of those Democrats who voted for the constitutional amendment to balance the budget. I have introduced on four occasions, four occasions, entire plans to balance the budget, knowing I'm not president and I'm not the leader but for illustrative purposes. I tried with Senator Grassley back in the 80s to freeze all government spending, including Social Security, including everything. The American people know we have to fix Social Security. They know we can't grow our way to a solution. They know we're going to have to make some tough decisions. They're ready to make these decisions. They're ready to step up. We have to be ready to straightforwardly tell them what we're about to do. As I go around the country like other candidates, whether I'm in Oxford, Mississippi, or Bangor, Maine, it doesn't matter. The one criticism our party gets from Democrats is we tend to be too timid. It's almost like we're afraid to tell the American people the unvarnished truth. Well, folks, folks, they're waiting for the truth. Now, in that first clip where the audio cut out towards the end, that happens whenever I download videos from Twitter for some reason, he called Social Security a sacred cow when he was talking about cutting it. And it's a sacred cow because whenever politicians try to cut it, 
um, there's a lot of backlash, right? But he's basically saying, look, I'm brave enough to go after this sacred cow. I mean, Bill Clinton tried to privatize it. George W. Bush tried to partially privatize it. And in 2008, you heard him use the code words. He said, we need to fix Social Security. Now, politicians use what is known as doublespeak, where they say something, but they say it in a really disingenuous way, right? So rather than just saying explicitly, I think we should cut Social Security, he'll use a code word, like we need to adjust or fix Social Security. And Republicans say the same exact thing, but that is code for let's cut Social Security. Now, they like to concern troll about the longevity of this program, and look, they'll say, I just want to fix it so that way it's there for other generations. But Social Security, contrary to popular belief, is not going insolvent. It's going to be there for generations to come, and the only tweak that we should be making is lifting the cap on taxable income, which is exactly what Bernie Sanders wants to do, and Bernie Sanders has affirmed that he will be protecting Social Security. Now, you saw that clip. That last part uh, was from 2008, when Joe Biden was the uh, running mate of Barack Obama, and he hinted that we should fix, i.e. cut Social Security. Now, what actually happened? Barack Obama, after pledging to protect Social Security, tried to cut Social Security. But can you guess who stopped him from doing that? It was Bernie Sanders, who mobilized a coalition to stop him from doing just that. And I will link you to the Fantastic Intercept article by Zaid Jelani where he talks about this. He goes into detail. And Joe Biden is from that administration, the administration that tried to cut Social Security. And Bernie Sanders is the guy who stopped him from doing that. He saved it. Now, I want to play one more clip for you because... You could say, well, look, that video was from 2008, and that's all water under the bridge. But what are Joe Biden's current feelings? He's saying that we shouldn't do that, right? Wrong. In 2018, there is a video of him discussing that Paul Ryan was correct, that, you know, we should cut Social Security. Now, Joe Biden's people will dispute the context of that and say, well, look, he wasn't saying explicitly that he agrees with Paul Ryan that we should cut Social Security, but he agrees that Paul Ryan would have to cut Social Security to pay for Donald Trump's tax cuts. But even if we interpret this video in the most charitable way possible, look out, because there's still code words in there, such as fix and adjust, that tell us what Joe Biden is actually thinking. The latest tax cut. Once again, those at the very top get the biggest breaks. And what, we, what do we have to show for it? Even our Republican friends are now beginning to admit there's no evidence these, these, these tax cuts are being put to work in the economy. No new growth, just more debt. And that puts middle class programs that they rely on and they've worked for at real risk. Paul Ryan was correct. When he did the tax code, what's the first thing he decided we had to go after? Social Security and Medicare. Now, we need to do something about Social Security and Medicare. That's the only way you can find room to pay for it. I don't know a whole lot of people in the top one-tenth of one percent or the top one percent are relying on Social Security when they retire. I don't know a lot of them. Maybe you guys do. Do we need a pro-growth progressive tax code that treats workers as job creators as well, not just investors, that gets rid of unprotective loopholes like stepped-up basis, and it raises enough revenue to make sure that the Social Security and Medicare can stay, still needs adjustments, but can stay, and pay for the things we all acknowledge will grow the country? So can you trust him? Even if we interpret that video in the most charitable way, he still talks about the need to adjust Social Security. What do you mean by that? Why are you being so vague? Well, it's intentional. Now, the last thing that I will leave you with is consider this. Joe Biden, on multiple occasions, has talked about his willingness to work with Republicans. In fact, he's enthusiastic about it. He loves Republicans. So if someone is repeatedly saying and has a history of saying that we need to cut and or fix Social Security and he's going to work with Republicans who are salivating over the idea of cutting Social Security, 
Do you honestly believe that Joe Biden is trustworthy on this issue? No. And understand that when you have someone who is explicitly, like Bernie Sanders, saying, I will protect Social Security, I won't cut it, and on top of that, he has a history of challenging even Democratic administrations who try to cut Social Security, this is your livelihood. You depend on this. Imagine you not getting that cost of living adjustment and you get a cut. How would that impact your life if you didn't get that cost of living adjustment for just two years? When you're already struggling, assuming you live on Social Security. Do you understand? If you vote for Joe Biden and you live and rely on Social Security, you're rolling the dice with your livelihood, whereas there is a safe choice in Bernie Sanders. Now again, you may reluctantly support Joe Biden because you're thinking he's more electable. You're making a grave mistake here. We were all told by the establishment and the media that Hillary Clinton was more electable in 2016. She lost to Donald Trump because it was an anti-establishment election. Trump ran as a populist, and if you don't think he's going to run as a populist again, you're horribly mistaken. So the only person who is authentic, who's real, who can undercut that pseudo-populist appeal of Donald Trump is the person who's actually looking out for you, who genuinely believes in protecting and expanding Social Security. Because you shouldn't be struggling when you paid into this program. You should be able to live a life where you don't have to go to food banks on top of getting Social Security. Where you don't have to scrounge for pennies to buy that last loaf of bread or gallon of milk. You shouldn't have to do that. We're the richest country in the world. So anyone who's talking about cutting Social Security in any capacity, they're immoral people because we can afford to expand Social Security, not only protect it, but expand it. Because ask yourself this, when we are spending, what, more than 50% of our discretionary budget, which overall accounts for two-thirds of our total budget, on the military... Why should you not have more money in your pocket every single month from this program that you paid into? Do you understand? We have to expand Social Security by lifting the cap on taxable income. And that's it. You solve the problem. No more fear-mongering from Republicans about the uh, program going bankrupt. That's gone. So this is the argument that we all need to be making to anyone in our family who's older that supports Joe Biden. I think that on the policy, we're just not going to get them to agree with us. But on this issue, an issue that's personal to them, we can convince them that it's in their own self-interest to back Bernie over Biden if they truly care about protecting Social Security. We've got to make that case and we've got to make it loudly and proudly because Iowa is taking place very soon and this is the last-ditch effort to swing people over to our side. And I think that this is one argument, one tool in our arsenal that we've got to use.